All right, let's hear it, Tampa Bay. The hottest city in America. It makes you absolutely world class. A national map of sustainable communities. It all starts in Tampa. This is the stuff that makes Tampa the place you want to live. For the win. All right, so show of hands here. How many people have played a musical instrument? And how many people had to practice scales doing that at some point? How many people enjoyed that? A few sickos out there. Okay, that's what I want to talk about tonight, is I want to talk about practice. And specifically, I want to talk about the practice of our practice. As professionals, as adults. And by the way, I'm Justin Davis. You can find me online at the worst Twitter handle in the world, JWD2A. Sorry, I have a very unoriginal name. Now, we're all very familiar with the, the idea of practice, right? As kids, we, we play piano. We know we have to play for 30 minutes a night to learn it. We know we have to go to soccer practice to get good at doing that. But as we get older, we don't practice as much as we used to. So I want to ask us tonight, what is our practice? As professionals doing our work in the world today, what are we practicing? What is the thing that we're doing to get better? But to answer that question, we first need to understand what practice is in general. What does practice really mean? Well, there's a guy from our very state right here at Florida State University named K. Anders Aronson. He helped answer that question. He studied a lot of these people who uh, were Olympic athletes and performing at the top of their craft. And he found this idea about deliberate practice. And deliberate practice is a way of practicing that produces exceptionalism. It makes you absolutely world class, absolutely the best in the world. And he found out a few interesting things about how these people work. One is that deliberate practice is not the same as work or play. Yeah, we go to work every day and we do our thing and we get better at it. But that's not the same as practice. Play, big leisure, that kind of thing, still not the same thing. See, deliberate practice actually has no monetary award. You don't get paid to do it. And you really don't enjoy it, like those scales, except a couple people. You really don't like doing it. These are the things that make practice, practice. The really cool thing is he found out is that it actually works for any domain. Whatever you want to get good at, practice helps. And I like how this guy's really concerned about the green ball. But it's really good news for us, so let's talk a little bit about the specific things about practice so we can learn a little bit more about this. So first thing is, if you're going to practice, you got to show up. you got to get there, show up, and actually want to do the work to get better. That's the first step to actually practicing. But, and the second thing that he found was that as you're putting together a practice activity, as you're thinking, how am I going to practice, what is it I do? That activity should build on something you already know. It should be cumulative. It should build over time. And maybe you're designing practice for other people, same thing. Thirdly, there should be a tight feedback loop. You should know how you're doing when you're practicing. Are you doing well? Are you failing? Whatever, there should be a tight, a tight feedback loop there. And fourth, finally, practice, again, like those scales we practice and those drills on the athletic field, it's a series of repeatable small tasks. These are the things that make up deliberate practice per his research that he did with these Olympians. Now, we all know and understand that these people need to practice. You know that if you're playing baseball that you need to go to the batting cages. And you know that if you're a musician you need to practice scales and chord progressions and this kind of thing. But the thing that I want to do is say that we need to bring that culture of practice into this environment into our daily work, into what we do in our office for other people so that we can become world class. We need to instill the same culture there. So some examples of that, you know, if you're a web developer, maybe that means that you just spend a couple hours a week just building six ways to log into a website. Or you just write tests to get better at testing your code and writing tests. I know it sounds terrible, but, you know, it makes you better. If you're a designer, maybe you're sitting and exploring shape and form and color and font and line and layout and all of these type of things, not because you're doing it for a client, not because you're doing it because you enjoy it, because you're trying to understand the craft better so you can perform better. And if you're in business development or marketing, maybe you're working with the business model canvas and you're taking other businesses and you're mapping them out on that to understand better how other businesses work so you're better at your own craft. The fact of the matter is, is that deliberate practice is our absolute best way toward excellence. It's our best way to become world class. 
And we owe it to the people that we're serving every day through our work to be world class. So my charge to you is to leave here and go find your practice. Start doing that to become better. Thank you.